Oh, it, it, it was a it was a very bad night. Uh, but but Mike Barnacle um, uh, just Mike hit, Barnacle's here. History made last night. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, you you Republicans should have picked up at least the 40 seats that Democrats picked up in 2018. They should be plus three, plus four in the Senate races. Uh, they 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 just lost coast to coast, except for Florida. Ron DeSantis had a massive night, and that's a massive loss for Donald Trump. Never, ever underestimate the American people. By the millions, this pageant, this pageant of democracy that we have, this magical day where people of all castes, all incomes, all races, all genders come out and vote. They stand in line for hours sometimes to vote. And yesterday they voted and they walked in and a huge number of them looked at the ballot, forgot about the pollsters, right. forgot about what we talk about each and every morning. And they said, oh, I could vote for crazy or I could vote for normal. And they checked the normal box. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we're here today. And one more thing, please, if you could allow me just to say please. the star of last night, to my mind, was Tim, Tim Ryan. Ryan. Tim Ryan. Tim Ryan. Yes. Tim he Ryan. Is. He is. You know, I, I wrote a column 10 years ago called Crazy Never Wins. Yeah. And I talked yeah. about my dad and, and how my dad was, you know, a rock ribbed Republican, but all the crazies that started early in the primary, you know, people like my dad go, now we're not going to do that. We've, we've lost our way over the past five, six years because crazy has won at least one election and then lost a lot, but still, still impacting the debate. But, you know, Mike, you talked about people having that choice. We bring up bro call all the time saying, why don't we wait for the American people to make the decision? One of my favorite books is Making a President 1960. And Teddy White begins with this beautiful, mm. beautiful scene in New Hampshire. And sometimes when I read it, I go, you know, is, is this is it fiction? Gone? Is this is this is this still reality? Mm. And a night like last night shows you it still is that the American people have the last say. And sometimes they go in a completely different direction. Than, than all the professionals yes, say they, they do. do. And, 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 and think about the tide that they were swimming against, the tide that we've talked about, mm -hmm. the tide that's in the news each and every day, the economy. Mm -hmm. You know, Inflation. no Democrat's going to be able to swim through the tide of the incoming economy, of the recession that they think is approaching, of inflation, of the cost of gasoline, of the cost of bread and milk. But guess what? They did. They did? They did. By the way, democracy and constitutional rights ended up being more important than pocketbook issues. It's not always the economy, stupid. It's so interesting how the ex, uh, exit polls looked really different than the polls we were all talking about at this time this morning. Joe's been up all night. Were you up all night? Not all night, oh, but God. Joe and I have some experience Taste yourself, from our days. Scarborough. But, well, well, we, you know, Let me frame out Willie the morning and I, for you. First no, in the Turkish no, prisons please. and then Studio mm -mm. 54. I don't all remember nighters. much of it, but all nights, <laughs> Willie and I would be talking so politics, would go country. downstairs. Bianca was on the white horse. Yeah. And it was just crazy. <laughs> okay. Andy, Andy, Liza, everybody was down there. Well, was I remember the cash was there. night for you guys. Great. Okay, so Georgia is one of the reasons. I wish why? they had no cash bell back in 77. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, Mickey. Are you ready? Right. Are you punchy? <laughs> you got to zip it. No. For just one second, yes, we'll frame everything out, okay? okay. All right. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just As I said, the reasons why we still don't know the balance of power, Georgia is one of them. Um, in Congress, we do know that Democrats have exceeded expectations by far. Here is a look at the Senate at this hour. So far, Democrats have flipped Pennsylvania with the win by John Fetterman over Republican Mehmet Oz. It's the only pickup on the board from either party so far. You know, Dr. Oz did his show from the studio. He did. It failed. Um, Check under your seats for magic like, beans that will help you your might, diet. It might help issues. your digestion. Yeah. You might find like a model of a stomach or something. I it was know. all fake. I think Claire called him out in yeah. front of Congress yeah, for sure. lying to his viewers. Yeah. Right now, it's Democrats, uh, 48 seats, Republicans, 47. Georgia and Wisconsin, 
too close to call at this hour. Arizona and Nevada, too early to call at this hour. And in the House, while NBC News cannot project a party winner, the decision desk has released this estimate showing Republicans with 220 seats and Democrats with 215 plus or minus 10, meaning either party could still win. Right now, Democrats have flipped five seats. Republicans have flipped 11. That's a net gain of eight for Republicans so far. Republicans needed to flip five seats to gain control, but with votes still out in several competitive races, NBC News is not yet able to make a definitive and, call. And Mika, just for context, why Democrats are celebrating, despite the fact they're likely going to lose the House, the average over the last 90 years or so has been in the the out party loses 28 House seats. Right. Add 8 percent inflation to that. Oh. The president with approval numbers in the low 40s. The expectation was a huge red the narrative wave, of his, and it absolutely did not happen last night. Yeah, and I mean, we've been talking about it this morning. The big reasons for the red wave. The it wasn't Dobbs, deniers, and the Donald. Mm. They all lifted Democrats. The issue of abortion turned out to be a massive factor yesterday with the Supreme Court's decision in the Dobbs case to overturn Roe v. Wade, playing a much bigger role than polls before the election suggested. The election deniers running in key races across the country, for the most part, lost big. And Donald Trump, once again, I mean, come on, Republicans, seriously, please stop putting your hand on the hot stove. It hurts. It hurts. Donald Trump once again dragged your party down to defeat. Do I have to speak more slowly? But it's it for you to understand. That you guys should have won. He lost the House for you. He lost the Senate for you. He lost the White House for you. He was the first president since Herbert Hoover to lose all three in one term. He lost the 2017 elections for you in states like Virginia. He got crushed in 2018. Well, you did, actually. He just sat there blaming you. In 2019, he lost again. Governors won in states like Louisiana and Kentucky. Democratic governors in 20, lost. And now 22. Once again, Donald Trump has made you the biggest loser. I mean, come on. When are you going to wake up? You know, Republicans, all right, historically, Republicans had expected to win massively, do well in swing states. And we're also banking on upsets in New York. We all heard it yesterday morning. All, all the Republican analysts are, yeah, we think we're going to win New York. No. In New Hampshire, Maggie Hassan's got, no. Colorado, no, we got, no. <laughs> Washington State, Republicans have been telling me for a month that they're going to beat Patty Murray. Patty Murray, she didn't even break a sweat. I mean, come on. It was, it was a massive, massive night, Robert Gibbs, was it not? And everything Republicans were telling us right. off air and so on air, wrong. Reminds me a bit of 2012, uh, the last campaign stop. We told Barack Obama he was going to be reelected president. Turns out, about the same time Mitt Romney's campaign was telling him he was going to be elected president the <laughs> night before. Uh, they believed a different electorate was going to show up, and I think they believed a different electorate would show up last night. You know, I, I think we look at the different issue sets. We, we talk about abortion. We talk about election denial. I, I think what we probably underestimated was the sort of confluence of those issues in the idea of extremism right mm -hmm. really was a force multiplier and if you think in, if you talk to any republican pollster uh, and you saw it in the exit poll last night and you ask somebody are what is your position on abortion? And you ask him, no exceptions in any cases lands you right about 9% 9%. of the American yeah. people, right? Republican pollsters, this is a terrible thing. We can't be for this. But if you've aligned at something like that, if you've denied elections, this stuff, this is the snowball that, go, that keeps getting bigger as it rolls down the hill. And, 
to Barnacle's point, all of a sudden crazy versus normal is, is a choice. If you'd have lined up all the statistics yesterday, as we were talking right. about, consumer confidence, mm -hmm. approval rating, right track, wrong track, all of those things, you, you know, I, you would have been like me and sort of hiding under your desk as the polls close. But I think, again, that extremism accumulated and, and we saw something I think is pretty stunning. Lots of important votes still to be mm -hmm. counted. Right. But the fact that we're not doing what I was doing in 2010, which was reading old transcripts of presidential uh, <laughs> press conferences the day after and trying to figure out what verb or what word would we use to describe this. Mm -hmm. uh, you went with shellacking. Shellacking. Well, Barack Obama one. picked that one. Oh. He picked that one, yes. Uh, and, yeah. But the, the, they're not sitting in the White House today figuring out whether it's shellacking or thumping. Right. Is historic. It's historic. Yeah. And yet.